try your little tenderness, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is one of the most soulful renditions of a song you'll ever hear. For Otis Redding, it was his last on television. December 8, 1967, Redding flew to Cleveland to perform on the News 5 syndicated music show, Upbeat. I David Spiro worked on the show as a teen with his dad, Herman, who was its producer. The musical talent appearing with host Don Webster ranged from rising Motown stars to rock royalty. Otis Redding, Spiro remembers, as a frequent guest. When he had a new single or a new album or just coming through town, he always managed to do the show. But that 1967 performance, Spiro remembers well because the night before, Redding, as many upbeat performers did, came by the house to play cards with his dad. Unfortunately, on this evening, Otis lost his paycheck. <laughs> he kind of kind of did upbeat for nothing. Yes, as a result, after appearing on the show, Redding was handed his check for $208, which he then promptly endorsed over to Herman. His son still has it. Spiro remembers watching the Browns game with his family the next day when his father got the call. The plane carrying Redding and his band had crashed into a lake in Wisconsin, killing the singer and six others. The pieces of the plane part of a permanent display at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It was kind of devastating. It was the first death I'd ever had to deal with somebody that I really knew and you know I'd known Otis for years at that point and the fact that hey yesterday everybody's laughing and singing and having a great time and and now he's gone. Now two days before that final performance here at News 5 Redding would record what would become posthumously his biggest hit sitting on the dock of the bay. The whistling at the end of that song? Well that was because he always intended to go back in and add more lyrics after that trip to Cleveland never getting the chance. Otis Redding was just 26. John Kasich, News 5.